Okay, so here Trudy is taking the team on to the away mission, I guess, so to speak. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, what's going on in the cockpit? Just cool stuff. Yeah, so interesting. First thing we noticed was she's not wearing a helmet or any kind of mask. That's right. Um, so that's weird. Like on one hand, I guess like, I guess com- she's not in combat, but she mm-hmm. is off base in a hostile and, territory. And maybe not hostile territory, but at least a very hostile environment with wildlife that can f*** your sh- up. Yep. So maybe at least a helmet. But then if you're going to have a helmet on, maybe there should be some quick deployable mask. Yeah, even because, if it's like what those fighter pilots have with the mask that like just hooks on. Like mm-hmm. at least it's right there. It's just a quick like slap on. That's right. I'm not seeing a mask anywhere. So if there was a breach, she's in trouble. Right. And then and helmet. Then, helmet is just a good idea all the time. So Yeah. I thought about this in terms of like like if you get shot with a gun or like a really heavy collision on you know on a motorcycle, like a helmet may not be enough. But at the, on the other hand, like for minor stuff, like even if she just bumps her head against the ship and she's like, oh, now she's got a headache, like avoid, yeah. just wear a helmet. Right. It's not about completely eliminating all risk. It's about right. reducing outcomes to right. not so bad. Yeah. So, and I guess it's weird. Also, normally they have helicopter pilots have the helmets with the, the communications built in. She's got this thing that's all loosey goosey. Like, what mm. if it, you know, she's doing some maneuver and it flies uh, off? She has headphones that are like meant for passengers. That's right. So that's interesting. It's a very interesting we're, procedures there. Um, yeah, we're, I think we're seeing that the military, the military component of the base is they're not thinking everything through. That's right. It's a little lackadaisical. Mm. Mm. Yeah, weird. Um, I was looking cool at these, though. yeah, looking at these outputs here. Looks looks legitimate. Look at this. Mm. Got actual dials here mm-hmm. for maybe for fuel and different important things. That maybe looks like an altimeter. And it then we like got physical these, buttons. Yeah, physical buttons. And then we got these these screens, which to me look like fighter pilot screens with these buttons on the side yeah. here. Very cool. Is she Super is. Cool. This looks like a horizon indicator. It looks like she's she's banking, so. looking down a little bit too much there. <laughs> yeah, but but <laughs> that's consistent with where she's flying, right? She's like going down to land onto the oh, the remote true. location. Mm-hmm. It's cool. There's yeah. a bunch yeah. of buttons. Getting a bunt a button overload here. My God. Yeah, but you know, she's trained up. I don't know what modern cockpits are like, but I've seen ones from like the '90s, and it's like, yeah, it's like this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like that. You got you got to know your. For sure. Hmm. And the throttles are up here. That's interesting. So you got to reach up high to get the throttles. It's not down here on the. I don't know what those are because if it's. I guess it's not a helicopter. It's a gyrocopter, something like this. That's right. So, I mean, I would imagine that all of the throttles and stuff needs to be immediately on your hands. Like, it's not like a reach around for it. Like, I don't know what those are. That's right. Even more so than in an aircraft because the thrust can be responsible for your lift as well as your forward motion. So you need like precise and quick control. So the fact this cannot be the throttles then, because then you've got this like delay when you're reaching up to it. You can't just rest your hand on it for minor adjustments. Exactly. Yeah. Must not be the throttles. I don't know. Mm. Cool cockpit though. Super cool. We've known a shot of uh, Pandora and its planet, which I don't remember the name of. Um, uh, These moons, holy crap. Super cool. They're so close to each other. Maybe that's just perspective. Mm. Yeah, I guess it's hard to tell because like things are far away and the eyes play tricks. That's right. Because, yeah, the moon looks close, but if you actually look to a skate, like the Earth moon system, if you look at the Earth's moon from the surface, it looks so close. But if you actually look at a scale model, it's super it's, far away. It's super, super far away. So moon, Earth, to scale. Yeah, so here we go. Here we go. Click on this one. Or not that one. Let's do this one. There we go. Click on this. Yeah, super far. It's so far away. But your eye magnifies things that it's directly looking at. Yeah. It's not the best picture, but yeah. 
So here, I got you saying. eyes could be playing tricks where these are actually quite far away. And if you do the orbital calculations, everything's oh in line. If they're far away, that that actually helps us for this plausibility of this planet because that means that Pandora is farther away from the planet than we think. And so oh, it might yeah. be radiation safe. That's right. So even though there, these plant, these moons are getting inundated with radiation, we're far enough away at this point in Pandora's orbit that the radiation is minimized. Minimized. Might, might be weak enough. Weak, yeah. weak enough. That's right. Yeah. 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 Cool. This so cool. When you you're like naive marine, you, you just started, you know, your first mission. You get lost, and you know you're. You just meet this hot girl, <laughs> essentially. That's right. Yep. And she's yep. taking, she's running with you. And then yep. the tree, like, I'm going to wife her. The tree is like him. He's him. the one who's going to save chosen everybody. One. The chosen, chosen one. one. Like who? Me? Who be me? I'm me? the chosen one. Hell me? yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! I'm gonna take over this culture. That would be I'm gonna awesome. save everyone. Save everyone. How long have I been here? Mm-hmm. Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> Who am I like, going to save? Like, I don't know. Everybody. Your God likes me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, didn't ask for this. I didn't say anything. I didn't, I didn't ask for this. You chose me. Do you need a savior, though? Because I arrived. That's right. <laughs> you, you want to <laughs> me like 50 bucks? Because, like, I'm the savior. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, you're the savior and you asked for 50 bucks? Yeah, I don't want to be cocky. I mean, I mean I'm going to take the entire civilization. But right now, but right now, I want to go get something to eat. So I get like 50 bucks. Like, I'm the chosen one. I'm good for it. That's right. I'm just going to go to the local, you know, tree, <laughs> tree <laughs> restaurant with my 50 bucks. That's right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know their economic system. I'm just, it's reasonable. They're, they're like, the tree chose our savior. And what did it was his first move? He asked for 50 <laughs> bucks. <laughs> he tried to grift us. <laughs> This would be amazing. Okay. This would be amazing to go into a foreign land and there's something like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. Like, yes, yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> Finally, the acknowledgement. <laughs> right. Do I speak your language? Do I understand your culture? No. Absolutely not. No. The, the tree chose me though. Mm-hmm. 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 Jesus has arrived. Jesus. That's right. <laughs> okay, so getting here is tricky. They they go up to the flying mountains the flying hills mountains the boulders mm-hmm. and it's vfr yeah. only super foggy the legendary floating mountains of pandora heard of them okay bro cool tree, cool tree. tactical clothes. tree yeah look at my instruments vfr from here on what's vfr it means you got to see where you're going can't see anything. <laughs> exactly. VFR only is like visual flight only, something like this. Visual flight reference, maybe something like that. Yeah. They fly into this cloud. So I think that means there is strict rules about visibility. And if you can't see, then you're not flying that day. But they just send it anyway. Cool. They just send it anyway. Just oh. go for the shot. Make it. That's brutal. Brutal. Okay, the reason that's brutal is because the reason that his helicopter crashed is because they were flying in visual-only conditions yeah, with fog. And then there's a controlled flight in terrain, which killed everybody on board. So here... They just make the shot. No, they just make the shot. Laser accuracy. Boom, Kobe. She's going to land it. She is going to land it right on the mountain. Gonna she is going to land it. She is going to land it right on the mountain. But... Obvi- I mean, there's no way she can see where the mountains are, so she got lucky. <laughs> Difference between luck and skill? Winning. Just is winning. Just won. Just won. That's right. Did, I, did, did she die? Did she crash? She must have done it right. Ridiculous. I want to I wanna mention, do they have these floating mountains? Uh, so I think I I think I have a, a theory as to how these might float. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's just buoyancy. So I think buoyancy is enforced, but I think it's not important. So okay. I'm thinking that unobtainium is a superconductor. Sure. And it has persistent currents. 
It, so if it's a superconductor okay. and it's in the ground all over the place and there's persistent currents, uh, it's able to hold persistent currents in the ground. And if these mountains are magnetized, then the Meissner effect can hold them up. What's Meissner? Meissner effect is when uh, a magnet and a superconductor come close to one another, the vortex lines get stuck in the superconductor and it locks the, the oh, you're talking about like, You're talking about like Japanese high-speed rail where they like float the train? Actually, that's, yeah, that's right. Because they use magnetic repulsion for those. I don't think there's flux locking with the Meissner effect, but I think it's it's the oh. idea of the superconductor floating a magnet. Okay. So you're saying these mountains are magnet? I think the mountains would have to be magnetized. Or the ground is magnetized and the mountains have superconductor inside them. We know. But then the wouldn't if that's true, then wouldn't the humans just mine the mountains? In fact, you just you like tie a rope to it and you like just pull it home. It's, it's already, it mined itself for you. Actually, yeah, you bring in one of those planet crackers from Dead Space and you just grab up the mountains right off the ground. You strip mine the floaty mountains and off you go. I mean, I mean, heck, you don't even got to work that hard. Take take um, Trudy's little plane here and just mm-hmm. just just tie a rope to the mountain and just pull it slowly right like it's there you go. the only reason it's staying there is like tied by these vines right well i guess it's, it should just be locked into place it's floating oh so not not only are they locked into place in like z and up and down but they're locked mm-hmm. in x and y too i think so yeah because the, the flux lines get locked into the mountain and it can't move so they're like pinned right. in location that's right so what we could do is mine the floaty mountains and then kill all the navi just for fun that's right and then we get like best you took our worlds. mountains like mm, mm-hmm. the mountains walked away on their own yeah. but we need to have no witnesses mm-hmm. why why do you not like us well because you're easy to kill yeah should have been bigger with guns i think you should have been smarter lovey with guns with guns and explosives mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> i like it very plausible <laughs> plausible explanation of why those things float mm-hmm. Ah, and if they're magnetized, that's why Trudy's Trudy's readings won't work because the, mag- ah. the magnetic fields and all mess with yeah. their circuitry. That's right. So okay. there's all kinds of magnetic field lines that are locked into place and running around here because of the superconductors either in the mountains or in the ground, which is interfering with her instruments. I buy it. I buy it. That's a tight explanation, dude. Did you come up? That was impressive. Oh, thank you. Hey, all the pieces fit together. Hmm. Super cool. Yeah. This was interesting. This is the soul, tree of souls where people go to download, tree, upload tree personalities. Of voices. Tree of voices. Tree of voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They upload, download personalities. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're like, this is nature and the, the biological internet and the trees. But I was like, hmm, this looks very manufactured, very, very architectural. It's too geometric. Right. It's too like... Because nature would end up with like an oval or some weird, not quite right. Like there's too Mm -hmm. many concentric circles going on. So was actually the tree internet that is here actually created by a civilization that is long dead? And this is a remnant? Yeah, maybe. Or or even maybe even like just the Navi, not even a different species, but just the how it was made is lost in time. Like like oh, yeah. Stonehenge, like pyramids type stuff. Like mm. this was made by them, whatever many thousands of hundreds, tens of thousands of years ago. That like they've forgotten what it is. And but it's actually civiliz- like Navi made. Yeah, so it's like their civilization collapsed, and then they became yeah. religious about the technology that they didn't understand. Ooh, I like oh, it. super cool, super cool. This mm. could be this could be like an Avatar three, like the prequel, like the previous civilization that set all this stuff up. That's right. Turns out they conquered the world by killing natives and strip mining the place, creating this. So they're hypocrites. <laughs> they're hypocrites. That'd be amazing. <laughs> a force. She talks about a network of energy that flows through all living things. She says all energy is only borrowed, and one day you have to give it back. Sure. Yeah, so one time I rolled a ball up a hill. Mm-hmm. Let go, roll down the hill. 
boom, the force. <laughs> the force. Because <laughs> right. you borrowed some energy and it was only borrowed for a little bit, then you gave it back. And I gave it back. Easy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's like like yesterday I ate a burrito and then I feel energized from it today. But today I have to give the energy back to the world. You know how. In in the form of poop. a bathroom break. Poop. Yep. Poop. Poop. I mean, there's that's that's how it works. You, <laughs> you right, took an right. energy with burrito and then you give it back through give it back to the world. Through feces. Defecation across mm-hmm. the nation. So they're like, it's so spiritual. You take energy and you give energy and it's borrowed, but you can't keep it for such. Oh, what they're really talking about is eating and. It's like there's just there's just thermodynamics. <laughs> it's just just. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, this <is> eating. <laughs> that's their entire religion. You boil it down to like <laughs> and piss. <laughs> that's right. I need, but it's right. Like when the, when the Navi say I need to go to the bathroom, what they say is I need to go to church. Like, I'm going to give the, back the energy. Give back the energy. That's right. Just a mound of. Mm. It's our temple. Mm. Wouldn't it be wild if that's how unobtainium comes by? <sighs> Whoa! That, that, I mean, it's in the tree, right? What? Like it's centralized there. I see. So once it becomes, once all the <gasps> becomes fossilized, it compresses mm. itself into unobtainium. Yeah. So actually, actually, um, mining this stuff is not. It's it's a one time shot. Like you mine out that unobtainium from underneath the tree, and then it's done, right? Really, maybe a better thing to do would be to capture these navi and put them in like a farm. That's right. You just feed them burritos for their yep. entire life, and yep. then capture they can borrow the energy, and then they give back the and energy in form yeah. of unobtainium. Yeah, and then we take their excrement and put it into a pressurizer for unobtainium. Avatar Four: The Enslavement. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing the white savior is here to save them. Ooh, he's going to stop slavery. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, here we have the manager guy and Dr. Augustine talking about what is the wealth of the planet. Perfect shut diplomat. your pie hole. Or what, Ranger Rick? You going to shoot me? I can do that. Yeah, can we just take this down a couple of notches, please? If you throw a stick in the air around here, it's going to land on some sacred... Burn for Christ's sake. There's some kind of electrochemical communication between the roots of the trees. Each tree has 10 to the fourth connections, and there are 10 to the 12th trees on Pandora. It's more connections than the human brain. They can upload and download data, memories, at sites like the one you just destroyed. What the hell have you people been smoking out there? They're just goddamn trees. The wealth of this world isn't in the ground, it's all around us. So this is like, this is the theme, which I think is actually a great one, that the corporate guy is so laser focused on making money with, with the unobtainium that he's missing a place where he could make even more money, mm. which is the tree internet. Like that's worth more monetarily, forget about the wealth and right. the other aspects, but mo- worth more monetarily than the unobtainium. Even if it's not like uh, obviously financially monetizable like right away Mm -hmm. like we could come up with some reasons why it would be how it would be monetized like immediately right Right. this is like a a a biological system that you could just pour water and sunlight and it grows up into this memory device like we don't have to have like we don't have this have this like nano layer deposition making magnetic storage no 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 way simpler you just drop a tree down right and it interfaces with biological brains for free we don't have right. to make wetware or interfaces or like do weird experiments. Wetware, on like we don't have to like plug, like we don't have to make like what's it called, cyborg people where you have like yeah. connection points in your brain, right? Where you don't have to like sit in front of a monitor and keyboard and type with your fingers. Like you right. just plug in, you get all the information just right. downloaded right to your brain. And it's made for biological systems naturally, not in some mm. like technology weird way. Mm. So this is something about like corporations get like laser focused on like i'm going to make money my way and that's it which right. actually is probably extremely suboptimal i mean they, gosh they could make money we, in many other ways this corporation should immediately pivot to tree internet we'll make money that way right instead of well i mean i guess the the real world example is instead of cutting down the amazon rainforest for wood 
which is like money right now. Like right. there's a wealth of biology inside the Amazon rainforest. There's like right. medicine for days just right. sitting there. We just don't know about it yet. Right. So like capitalism is like we should make money. But if we're so blinded by like I want the wood now, capitalism cuts down the tree. But optimal capitalism would actually protect mm-hmm. the rainforest mm-hmm. because it'd be like there's so much wealth in there. We would be idiotic to cut it down. Agreed. So it's a yeah, flaw. So this, this business guy is more like middle management. He does not right. have the long-term vision. That's right. And society, it's not in society's benefit for them to mine the unobtainium. Right. It's in society's benefit for them to make, to study the tree internet. Or at least to drive around to other parts of the planet and see if there's unobtainium elsewhere. Heck, why don't they just do a survey using one of the various flying machines they have? That's and then right. next time they, they come down the shuttle, just land there. Like You, right. you, you have access to the entire moon. Like you have <laughs> that's, a drop shuttle. That's right. So if they, if they have access to the entire moon, survey the entire moon. If there's like a desert area or like some barren area that has lots of un, unobtainium, And you don't have there to first. deal with combat with the locals. Like Go there. Right. Right. Yeah. So are they optimally doing capitalism i I don't think so because they obviously are blind to the wealth of the world and they're just brute forcing it right even if you like at first when i thought of this i thought of it as like the wealth of the world being more like a spiritual emotional Mm -hmm. thing but even if you like strip that away and turn into like a technology like an applicable Mm -hmm. technology like Mm -hmm. right there heck even if you do it to sell advertisements to the navi you have the whole history of all their species like you know exactly how to target them (laughs) yeah I I view this as like, say, the car companies, you know, they're like, we're going to make internal combustion engines and that's it. That's because we're capitalists. We make money that way. That's it. That's right. But then then Elon comes in and makes electric cars. And now his car company is worth more than all the gasoline car companies combined. Yeah. So they were not making money optimally. They should have like looked into alternative technologies because that's worth more. So they say they're trying to optimize money, but really they're just, just blind. They're making every quarter they're making their their black, and that's it. Right. But they're not optimally making money. They could make a lot no, more. Absolutely not. They're, yeah. Right. So this is a good theme. I like this, where it's like capitalists are like, I'm in for making money. But actually, you're not. You're interested in making a little bit of money right now. Right. And interested in making money in your blinded, narrow vision way. I like this theme. Hmm, good theme. So because we need the unobtainium, let's kill the natives. Ready? These dumb bastards ain't getting the message. Switch in 10 years. Fire. So I just put myself in the Navi's shoes and the humans are coming around talking about how powerful they are. And they're like, yeah, like we're bigger and stronger and faster these humans you know eh. but then to feel the power of this tech just destroying your home and just like it's what this is what they were talking about like holy Uh, can you rephrase the statement navi don't wear shoes navi don't wear shoes no they're barefoot navi don't wear shoes but they don't wear what they don't wear shoes. No, they don't. You said you be, you can imagine yourself in their shoes, but I they don't they don't they don't wear shoes. Don't. Ah, so so a metaphor is this thing that we use in language. Yep. That doesn't always literally mean exactly what it is. Oh. Okay. So when I said put them in the shoes, put yourself in their shoes, I didn't literally mean it. Oh, you okay, okay. So you want me to wear their like loincloth? All right, I'm down. Yeah, with this heat, oh my gosh, it'd be so hot. Like these alien guys, they're small and tiny and fragile and they can't even breathe my atmosphere. They have this mask on all the time. But then they're like flying up there without any flapping wings. Like, what the mm-hmm. f*** is that? And and then they like burn my house down. Like, I'm, I'm going to take some pot shots. I'm going to throw but, my, my poison arrows at them. Also, it's not hot right now. See this Navi? He's not in the fire. The f- fire is hot, but he he's at normal temperature. Okay, so we have these things in literature where we describe it as like a a word f- you, dude. 
<laughs> doesn't feel so good, does it? <laughs> I see. I see what you're saying is technically more right than I said. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it's yeah. bad for them. Yeah. Fine. But yeah, to feel yeah, this gosh. power, like That's this right. tree for the Navi is like immovable. This incredible structure, and the humans are just like. Pew, 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 pew. Down. Bup, 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 bup. Yep. Down. This thing took like whatever unknown amount of time to grow, and it mm-hmm. supports my entire civilization. And these guys threw a little little balls at it, and it popped, and it died. It died. Like, gosh, so, you, you, that's the time to surrender. Like, you clearly cannot win. These it's aliens, the time. Yeah, it's time to pivot to some other method of dealing with the humans. Because mm. you can't just be like, well, fight. Like you're head to head. You, nope. you're, you're just going to lose. It's just as simple as that. The humans have a lot of power and you do not. Time to pivot. They got the tech. <sighs> power is power sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is power. These dumb bastards ain't getting the message. Switch in 10 years. Fire. Brutal. Should have gone to the library and started engineering. That's right. <laughs> and then these guys, these guys are back in the control room watching it. It's interesting seeing their reactions. They've just done an atrocity. Corporate they, guy? Yeah. He's like, whatever. Yeah, just blank face. Just like, blank okay, face. fire. Yeah. Like, I don't feel it. I'm not even excited. I'm not just, right. okay. I just, there's a, I want the unobtainium. What's mm-hmm. the problem? This guy is like, what? I'm. He's pondering it. He's seeing He's, he's yeah. like, I'm a bad he's, person. He's shocked at this woman is just crying. She's feeling it. She's feeling it like all these mm. people are dying. I mean. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> She's emotionally compromised. Bad leadership. <laughs> She's like, it's an atrocity. I'm just going to make it about myself and break down. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to experience these feelings that other people are dying. It's yeah. about me feeling it. This woman. She's like. When's my break? She's like, when's this break? Is this messing up the phase lock? It's messing up the phase lock. Yeah, that's right. This guy, I think he's processing. He's got a little smirk on. I think he's coasting. I think he's been quietly quitting for many years. And he's just dialed uh-huh. in the smile. Don't cause any problems. Don't mm-hmm. rock any boats. Like, I don't want to get sent back to Earth. My mm-hmm. life sucked back there. Just dial it. I don't think I'm going to stop shaving. No one's going to fire me for that. Yeah, okay. So he's just giving up. But he still He's wants like, a paycheck. Pretty lights, whatever. I'm just here in the room anyway. And then this woman is like, it's nap time. Mm-hmm. I hope no one notices my drug addiction. That's my story for her. Another day, another atrocity. Yeah. Another paycheck. Yeah. Another hit of drugs. I wonder, yeah. though. I mean, honestly, there, there probably is some type of black market going on in here. Of like goods I mean, shuttled from, the, from America. I'm from, from Earth. From America, yeah. I mean, uh, how could there not be? Because you know, probably supplies are limited, so people can pull strings and get luxury goods. Yeah, why not? Heck yeah. Drugs might be hard though, but there might be a drug trade. I mean, we got a bunch of jarheads coming. Yeah, I mean, whatever it takes for me to not feel any feelings for watching this atrocity happening. That's a good point. Feeling numbers. Oof. Yeah. Brutal. And this, this is a military guy. Um, he's planning the next atrocity. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly what's happening. Everybody is on board for some reason. They're like, yeah, let's go get them. So here's like Oof. the thermal output of the Navi that I guess are mm-hmm. warm-blooded. And we pretty sure they're warm-blooded because this is a, looks like thermal. Mm. And we're sitting in the yellow region. Everything else is blue or black. So mm-hmm. it's low temperature. So they must mm-hmm. be warm-blooded. Um yeah, so they're going to, and this is the attack on that uh, tree of souls. Mm. That's what they're looking at. It's just so overwhelming power because they have satellites and humans have satellites in orbit and they can just look down at the tree of souls. Oh, what are you guys and, doing there? Oh, you're gathering? I can see it happening. I, I can see it happening. Yeah. And then I can also plan my attack probably better than you can because I can get a bird's eye view of the situation. And I haven't even been there. So, That's right. It's just. And yeah, and, and it just, it just. You can use a camera to measure exact distances. There's no like, for I mean, for the Navi to measure distances, it must be quite difficult because you never get like a straight road. 
you mm-hmm. always are thinking like, well, it's up and down and Z okay. and kind of right. like you can't take a direct path. You have to like walk around That's this right. weird thing. Like, mm-hmm. So their mental picture may be actually the Navi's mental picture may be different than reality in terms. Right. Like it's I mean, actually very, very effective at navigating. Very right. effective. Yeah. But also like maybe not an objective. Just here's an image. Like That's right. So, yeah, very cool. Gosh, and you can never move in secrecy. Like from from the Navi's perspective, they did not see any human or any avatar there at all. But then like humans knew we were here. Like what? That's right. And in fact, it looks like we can see individuals. Or at least little clusters of a few, right? There's supposed to be 2,000 people here, Mm -hmm. which also does not seem like much of an army. That's right. So I, I can make out where the Navi are. Mm-hmm. on a you know per person or maybe per cluster tactical which basis. means they can they can't really even ambush me because i know where they are that's right Oof. it's just overwhelming power compared yeah. to the navi i Oof. hope there are no aliens because <laughs> because if they float in and they can do all this to us like mm, yeah, mm, we'd, be, mm. we'd be screwed mm-hmm. weird thing is everybody's on board so oh, yeah. When we were teenagers, the Iraq war was happening. And the language of the Iraq war was unique to the time period. And then it's used in this scene, which was super weird. Our only security lies in preemptive attack. We will fight. So our only security lies in preemptive attack. Preemptive attack, I remember, was the language that was used in the Iraq war back in like 2003. Like, we've got to attack, preemptive strike. It was to go in to get weapons of mass destructions before Mm -hmm. they could be used against us. That's right. So we've got to preemptively strike. Mm -hmm. But like in Avatar, (laughs) like preemptive strike what? We, We attack the Na'vi. Oh, oh yeah. So so it was is it was they so what the colonel said it was like there are two hundred people here two days ago. And now there are two thousand people here today. The next week there could be twenty thousand. <laughs> like so you speculated a threat and then you needed to react against it. <laughs> like two thousand might be all there are on the planet. Like, but there could be twenty thousand. We need to attack. But then who caused the re- who gave the Navi the reason to accumulate, like to come together into a warrior group? That, we did. The colonel, the colonel specifically was the one that was like fire <laughs> yeah. caused the problem and then was like, oh, my gosh, we need a preemptive strike. But you already did preemptive strike. I mean, you can't punch a person. And then when they go to punch back, I can't be like preemptive strike. Like, no, no. <laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> they, they didn't even go back to punch back. They just took their hands out of their pockets. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, oh, preemptive strike. Yeah, and then you're telling it to the cops later, and you're like, well, he was going to punch me, so I preemptively struck him. And the cops but like, you attacked what? first. Well, you attacked first. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Fight terror with terror. Yeah, let's listen. Fight terror with terror. We'll fight terror with terror. But the, uh, the but Navi- you, you caused the terror. <laughs> you just firebombed their tree. Who's do like, terrorists? What? Like, they're, well, they're they're terrorizing me because they're amassing together. There could be twenty thousand people mm-hmm. by the next week. That's terrifying to me. But I terrorize them by burning them out of their home. Right. We went to their home, burned the whole thing down, killed a bunch of them. They didn't mm-hmm. kill any of us. Not one. That's their terror. They're, they're bad. The shuttle as a bomber. It's for some kind of shock and awe campaign. Our only... So in the lead up to the Iraq war and during it, we were saying we would bomb the Iraqis in a shock and awe campaign. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, first off, this is just pulled straight from the Iraq war verbiage of the time. Yeah, the emotions are still strong when hearing those words. Yeah, it still, it still triggers me up. Mm-hmm. But also, it's inappropriate for this like yeah. shock yeah. and awe, like one bombing run is not a shock and awe campaign. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it made, <laughs> the words made sense at the time, felt very good, very, very strong, made mm-hmm. the sense a lot in this movie. But actually, like twenty years later, like shock and awe, you already destroyed their only home that they've ever had. <laughs> what, what more shock and awe do you need? Yeah, that's right. One more bombing run, a shock and awe. Shock and awe. Like, for, we've already crippled their society. Shock and awe campaign. Our- <laughs> like. <laughs> It just doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah, it doesn't make sense anymore. So he's saying like the the military leader guy um, is just what is his name? His name is his name is the colonel Colonel Miles 
Quaritch. Quaritch. Sure, okay. Quaritch. Sure. So the colonel is kind of just saying words that triggers emotions in the crowd so that they got uh, on board. But it's actually yeah. not mapping onto reality kind of at all. But but it works. Like he gets everyone on board. Like yeah. he instills them in this emotional need. Like we need, to, we need to strike. We need to go. Everyone get a gun. That's right. And then, yeah, let's listen one more time. Our only security lies in preemptive attack. <laughs> we will fight terror with terror. Yep. And they're rigging the shuttle as a bomber. It's for some kind of shock and awe campaign. Like our only security, like, you could just leave them alone. <laughs> like, just like, leave them alone. Yeah. It's not your only security. You got options. <laughs> you do have options. It's, and then the the crowd, like this guy, is like he's yes, he's laser. Oh. He's dialed in. He's dialed in. He's the guy next to him, like people. checks with them to see, like you you dialed in. Okay, me too. Me too. I'm dialed I'm in. Dialed in. I'm dialed in. Let's go kill some people. Let's go kill some people. Get some. Get some. So Jake Sully and the the team are gonna. Take on the bombing run, the shock and awe campaign. What is the plan again? We're screwed. We're going up against gunships with bows and arrows. I have 15 clans out there. It's over 2,000 warriors. We know these mountains. We fly them. You fly them. They don't. Their instruments won't work up here. Missile tracking won't work. They'll have to fire line of sight. If they bring the fight to us, and we have the home field advantage. You know he's going to commit that bomber straight to the Tree of Souls. They get to the Tree of Souls, it's over. We'll destroy him. Well, I guess we better stop him. So this was the discussion of the plan. It's just vague feelings of like, this is what we want to accomplish. There's no like actual plan to this. <laughs> yeah. We have home field advantage. Yeah. Yeah. So we're good. <laughs> there's, no, there's no plans of like, attach yourself to the rocks, then drop in the last one. Just like, right. we're going to stop them. Yeah. We got home How field do we, advantage. Yeah. How do we get the troops from point A to point B? How do we, like, where do we position? What's our timing? What's, what's our supply lines? Like, None of it. We're just we're just None gonna will ourselves to victory. Yep. <laughs> we're just gonna wheel ourselves there. Yeah. Also, I just want to point out, Jake Sully says this. Fifteen clans out there. Hold on. Bows and arrows. I have fifteen clans out there. Sorry, he has fifteen clans out there. Like what? Yeah. He's been there for like months. He's like, I, I have 15 clans. They're mine. Okay. Okay. But what can I? Okay. He's Torak <laughs> Makto. He's got the coolest ride. Everyone accepts him. him. He's got mm-hmm. the clans. Like, he, he's, he is the savior. It, it, he is the savior. It's just so ridiculous. Yep. Instead of him being like an important advisor to the leadership of the Navi as the oh, outsider and who's he's, helping them plan and make. You know, knowing human culture and human tech, they can make mm-hmm. plans. As an advisor, he's like, mm-hmm. take them over. They're mine. Shit. They're f-ing my clans. Have they I didn't even want met- to be saved. I'm going to choose to save them for them. That's right. That clan, I don't even remember the name of that clan. They're mine. They're mine. You guys go in first, though, because I don't know. I know you the <laughs> I, least. I don't, know, I don't know you the least. I have 15 clans. Yeah, I can't believe it. He has 15 clans. Look at that. That's infinite confidence and arrogance. Right. Just, just embodying it. That's right. I want to be him. I want to be him so bad. I want to. I want to swoop into places and just be like, "I'm your leader now," and they're like, "Yes, you are." Um, before I tell you that I'm your leader, I'm actually a spy first. Just to let you know, heads up. I, I've been a spy the whole time, but uh, I'm your leader now. Please give all your command structure mm-hmm. to me. And please Look at trust my car. Me. Yeah. It's red and it's fast and it's the biggest right. one here. That's right. That's right. When you got the cool whip, hey, it makes you the leader. Mm. I mean. But, he, but he's right. He's doing the right thing. Yes, he he's taking over command. Mm. So payload, yeah, they set up a bombing run. This is yeah, payload for the bombing run. Mm-hmm. We will blast the crater in their racial memory so deep that they won't come within a thousand clicks of this place ever again. Ooh, jiggery. Okay, super cool. I, I like it. Mm-hmm. There's like this bomb, this C4E type mm-hmm. stuff. I don't know, explosives. Mm-hmm. But like they have a walker robot pushing up the ramp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do they, they're not, they're not got forklifts anymore. Like why, why are you getting a robot to, to do this? Like it's just tippy and un- off balance That's right. And this is this looks like squishy stuff. So he's got yep. his big metal paws on squishy mm-hmm. stuff, pushing it mm-hmm. from the top, not from the mm-hmm. bottom where you should be no pushing good. it. 
and it's already it's already on a rack it's already on a pallet type thing like do they in pandora they don't got forklifts anymore that's right this is a military asset not not a logistics right. asset what are they mm, doing no good and like why it, robot has to balance on one leg at a time that's but true. a forklift yeah. has wheels forklift is super stable right and if you if something goes wrong with a forklift you just stop yep reassess okay move yep. forward with this it's very different that's a great point what are they doing no good what are they doing it's like the well, military guys they were like guns 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 like no no lots of logistics why is this guy helping dude I, and he's in a blind spot <laughs> the the pilot cannot see that dude that's right <laughs> he could make a, a mistake and this guy goes flying actually what why does that guy even think he is helping <laughs> he's not helping there's no way no way is this guy setting up a mortar no oh no he's, he's setting up a gun tripod Oh, on the door so he can yeah, kill yeah. people. Got it. But, yeah, dark, but yeah. I mean, that's what guns do. I mean, that's, I guess they're loading bombs there. That's, you know. Also, the, the kernel uses, so the word race used to mean species like 150 years ago. Like people would say the race of chipmunks, the race of, but now it means like. Skin color. Skin color, race of people. But I think with modern usage, you would say in the species memory. But he goes for full trigger language and says racial memory. Racial memory so deep that they will to crater in their racial memory so deep that has to crater in their racial memory so deep. <laughs> Why? He's just he's just like hitting him with emotion left and right. Maybe he like doesn't realize that they're an alien species. But he's just he's just a racist. <laughs> he's just a racist. <laughs> <He's> just. A- <laughs> And the whole crowd, the whole crowd is on board. They're, on They're board. like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to create a crater in their racial memory. Uh, <laughs> looking at his team, maybe that's right. Maybe that's right. Oh boy. They, they have this guy, look at this guy. Look at this guy. <laughs> Straight up tatted from, up. Straight up from West Virginia. Seriously. This guy's a little skeptical. <laughs> the, the one color guy's like, mm, I don't like those words you're using there. That doesn't feel right. But I'm also in the front row, so I I cannot say anything. <laughs> you will recognize my face. <laughs> Ridiculous. So this is the battle. They're coming in with the, They're coming with the fleet. Oh, mm. could you imagine being the Navi, seeing this coming to you? Whew. No, but I can't imagine being the humans, being on the mission. That's right. Ready to go kill some folk. <laughs> Yeah, just going out with this group and get a little zoom in here and get this, mm. this flight formation. A little bit chaotic, but I guess they got some type of formation. Yeah, it looks... Yeah, we've decided that they're pretty lax when it comes to procedures and formations. Mm. But man, this place is just jammed full of like of ambush locations. Just yeah. every every rock. Just, and they're, they're all That's flying. Right. They, they, they have full access of 3D space. That's right. The mountains only go so high. Why don't they just fly above the mountains? That's right. Why don't they, they need to fly above the mountains? Because then no, nothing can be dropped on top of them. Exactly. They're in a higher energy and state when they're high. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They can come down on people, mm-hmm. but they the other people, the Navi cannot drop things and bomb them. And so what you are they can't doing? Just, you can't just have Navi and the Ikran and the, and the birds mm-hmm. just hanging out, waiting on top of the mountain. Mm-hmm. Like like they at least disperse. Not necessarily all of them above the mountains, but like mm-hmm. some of them on Overwatch. Like right. That's right. And I think the atmospheric pressure at this altitude is okay. They they can definitely fly higher. Yeah. Oh, but then there's the cool the cool uh, Navi side, like their own counter battle. That's right. Yeah. And then there's this ground effort where like the helicopters dropped off foot soldiers, but then there's also like a different type of drop ship, like a local drop ship that drops off the mm-hmm. Walker guy, the Walker robots. Yeah. It was kind of weird that they decided to drop off ground troops into the forest with these, it seems like a risky drop off Mm. because they'd have to have a clearing of some kind. Weird. Gosh, what if you like dropped them onto sharp stuff? Done. That's right. Or somebody like there's an unforeseen branch. Mm. Quicksand of some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then the Navi have their their horse tribes running through here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And this is the thing they're attacking. 
Mm-hmm. The Tree of Voices. Yeah. Which they're going to attack it with a bombing run mm-hmm. here. So mm-hmm. they're going to fly over it and drop those pallets of explosives down mm-hmm. onto this and blow them up. Mm-hmm. So the I attack think- is coming from the from above. Mm-hmm. I think that's even the next picture. Yeah, this is the weapon. This is the mm-hmm. weapon of choice that the humans are going to drop on it. Yeah. So, so if the attack is air based, <laughs> mm-hmm. and all the horse people can are stuck on the ground, mm-hmm. why did we care about killing them at all? I know, <laughs> right? That's like, a good point. All we all we need is the air escort, the air, the bomber, and the escort, and all these mm-hmm. these these um, navi on the ground are just irrelevant. Irrelevant. So why did you're saying why did we land grand grand yeah, why, troops? Why, why, why did we? Why? 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 <laughs> There's no reason for that. Right, because the target is this. Right. So we come from above, drop the bomb from above, from then, stupidly high, from way high, as high as you can get, and then you leave. Yep. The ground forces taking out the Navi ground forces. How is that going to help the bombing run? I mean, if the Navi, if the ground, if the human forces are not on the ground, then the Navi horses can go surround the tree and like body shield it. But then like they just die in the explosion too. Right. And then the logistics. Like, what, what is going on here? Why, yeah. why is there a ground fight at all? That's right. The logistics of the ground fight. You've got the helicopters. You got the troops. You got to armor them up. You got to get the the mechs in there. You got to deal with the trees and the terrain. Like not worth it. Why? Why? Why at all? Why? Why at all? All these ships that are dropping off people, they could have had gunners, or they could have just been in the sky themselves. That's right. You just go up to the treetops, use your thermal vision to see where the Navi are, and take them out with the door gunners. That's right. You don't even need VFR. You can just wherever the red thing is in the sky, pop, pop, pop. Pop, 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 pop. Yep. But then even you wouldn't even need to do that because they're irrelevant to the mission. Yeah, uh, yeah. You only need to fight. <laughs> you only need to fight the other flyers because right. all the people, all the Navi on the ground are just—they're just irrelevant. Right. They cannot defend anything from, from the, sky. the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why have ground forces? What is happening sense. here? The colonel is just like, we're going to go kill him. We're going to go yeah. kill him. Shock and awe. Terror with terror. I, I am shocked that you guys launched troops on the ground. Why? Stay the course. Stay the course. Oof. I remember that one. Mission accomplished. <sighs> mission accomplished. The what mission? Everything. Killing them all. Mm. With this cool interface. This is the me- This is inside the mech. This is one of the soldier guys mm-hmm. inside the mech. Uh, cool advanced hand thing. Mm-hmm. The readout it looks like this is where he is. Mm-hmm. Some type this of is, sonar pingy something. Yeah. And I guess this terrain comes from the satellite. Probably. So they have some kind of GPS system that can geolocate them mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. overlay the terrain. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Super cool. I don't know how he drinks anything because his hands are just like <laughs> stuck in the thing. Imagine he like grabs a water bottle, like thunk, and he <laughs> cracks his own shield. Yeah, why not have a I get no helmet. Or you could have you could have the face mask with the helmet, you could have the the helmet protection of the helmet, and then mm-hmm. you could also have a drinking straw. Ooh. When you get dehydrated. You know, I've wondered how do pilots drink stuff? Like That's fighter pilots. Question. Like yeah. how do they get I water? Know. I don't know. I don't know. So this is just this is overwhelming for the the Navi, right? This person has never been here before, and yet he has this kind of terrain awareness that that's supposed to be your home field advantage. Right. But it's gone. And it's maybe he still doesn't have as much awareness sure. of the sure. terrain, but it's much more than the Navi would expect for somebody who's never been there before. I mean the, the Navi need to rely on element of surprise. Because otherwise right. humans just have too much too much too much firepower and too many bodies. Yeah. And this strips away a lot of element of surprise. That's right. That's right. Because they're monitoring the oh, whole yeah. battlefield. IR, something. Yep. Yeah. Let's look at this crash. The physics of this crash was pretty awesome. Oh. Okay, so notice the, the left forward engine gets taken okay. out which means the thrust from that engine is taken out. Yeah. So that means the other engines, if they don't compensate right away, are going to tilt the aircraft uh, toward the taken the out engine 
and it's going to tilt it forward because there's not enough thrust forward as well. Oh, so you're going to go. Okay. You're going to go from their perspective. You're going to go left and forward. Let's, that mm. does happen. Lose thrust left and forward. Ah, cause so so you're saying the back, the like the back right thrusters are still doing the same thing that they normally do, which makes mm -hmm. it tip forward. Makes it tip forward, and, and they'll probably the they'll probably compensate eventually to tip, to bring it back, but in that temporary moment, it's going to tilt forward and left, which it does. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. That's and then the next time, the next thing it hits is like some rocks. It hits the rocks and takes out the left wing. Okay. Which means the left wing loses lift, which means okay. the right wing still has lift, so it's going to tip to the Even left again. more to the left. Right. And then once it gets into a really bad state, it just sort of dot, nose dives. Non-linear, it's gone. So oh, it loses left wing. Up, up. And then it tilts to the left because the right wing has all the lift, which torques it around to the left. Mm. This is a detailed crash. Cool details, I think. Also, by flying low, they lost their exit off the planet. But I guess I guess there's another one in orbit. There must be more. Multiple in orbit, multiple on their way. They can just, you know, maybe there's infrastructure in orbit to get to get out of there. <laughs> Could you imagine if this was the only dropship? And <laughs> so then Jake Sully at the end, he's like, get off the planet. They're like, okay, we'll request a new dropship. So I guess we're prisoners <laughs> for six years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, also, we talked about they should just be high, like yeah, every day. Just fly so up. they fly well above the mountains. So this yeah. doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So that doesn't happen right there. Mm -hmm. In fact, they are. This is this is the arch for the tree of soul. <laughs> they're trying, to thread, they're trying to thread the needle. <laughs> they're trying to get in there. <laughs> what are we doing? We could just be. We could be up at thirty thousand feet. With, you know, our computer aiming system for our bombs. I guess they don't have computer aiming because they don't so. have That's the right. military asset to do that. Gosh. Heck, they could <sighs> drop stuff from orbit. That's right. But I guess if this is, now that I'm thinking about it, they improvised an explosive for the bomb, which is these pallets. These pallets of explosives, yeah. So maybe they do need to get in close because they don't have any military precision weapons because they figured they wouldn't need them. So um, they, they get this improvised one, so they got to get in low. Oh, okay, drop it yeah, off. yeah. Because they don't have like a gigantic guided missile. Like mm -hmm. they, they don't have that. They just have straight up explosives. Right. So, but then I think this is the inappropriate. This is an inappropriate craft to use for the drop off because it's too slow and lumbering and big. That's they need right. a more nimble craft to do a drop off. So kind of the the colonel ship, the colonel ship would be more appropriate. It's got a little more, and it's it's able to hover, and it's able to carry those um, mech the droid the the mech bots, which that's means right. it can carry weight. That's right. So I think that's the more appropriate one. And this thing seems to be relying on some kind of lift forces when it's in full flight. Mm. We can see it using lift here because it's kind of struggling. Mm -hmm. Plus the the lift makes it torque. I mean, I buy it. It has wings on it. Yeah. Whereas the, the kernels is a full VTOL. It can hover, no mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. It's kind of designed for that. This is like a cargo plane. Yeah. I mean, it's really meant for re-entry and getting to the base. Right. So the tactics that the kernel chose with the ground forces being inappropriate, not needed, and then using this for the bombing run, which is slow and I mean, lumbering. Like, also, if this is if this is the drop ship or the shuttle, then and i don't see it having like booster rockets that means this shuttle's rockets are able to, or engines are able to get it up into space which means this thing is built for speed not for maneuverability so asking right. this thing to like weave through these rocks yeah no no fly above it <laughs> yeah and you can you can see when it's moving it's lumbering that's right like lumbering movements it can't control itself away from the rock. It gets its wing taken out. I mean, they, so, they tried to get a seven forty seven to fly underneath a bridge. Right, it's not not a good not a good decision. Not the right choice. Right, Colonel, bad Colonel. tactics. In fact, he's in the craft right now, watching the thing explode. He should be the pilot. Should be in this craft. 
That's right. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Mm. She she made the worst mistake in the movie. Like, she had this. Oops. Light her up. Right there. Not the only one with a gun, bitch. Huh? Oh. That's fun. So she could have ended the entire battle because because she's an American with a gun. So she's like, she's, she's the only fight fighter helicopter thing, right? With these mm-hmm. mounted guns. Mm-hmm. And so so like the Navi were having a hard time penetrating even the class. They could, they could, they came mm-hmm. flying down and with the high mm-hmm. kinetic energy. Yeah. But otherwise, like Trudy's the best weapon that that the Navi has. Mm-hmm. And she has the element of surprise. Yeah. She could have just floated in, shot up the cockpit, shot up the glass, would have crashed. Crash the colonel ship. Yep. So that was our opportunity to like to end the entire battle, and instead she like did this. She did like flew bass and did like head to head. You want to square off against mm-hmm. you? Like she she screwed up. She screwed yeah. up. This this whole thing could have been done. I agree. She even has the shot right here before mm-hmm. they get off. Of, they she needs to take the shot right now, right there and there. Yep. And she, they spent she time like painting the side of her ship to make her ship stand out against the other human ships. Like no no. Use that advantage that you you could blend in. You can fall into formation just with them. Actually, you could preemptively strike them. That's right. In fact, she has the element of surprise. She gets the chronal ship, the element of surprise. Why do a run from the back where it's armored? Yeah, she could have just floated in. Because okay, she's not an airplane. She doesn't have to face forward. She could That's have right. spun around and faced towards the, the front of the ship the entire time. And so mm-hmm. just from above, just shot through the glass, kill everyone. That's right. So if she doesn't have the paint on the side... She can sort of blend into formation in the chaos of battle. People aren't going to immediately recognize that's enemy. Right. Float into position quickly, but not too quickly. Mm-hmm. Take out the cockpit. <laughs> and then do the same thing to the bomber. Done. And they might not know what hit them because they'd be confused right. in the heat of battle. Yep. So, yeah, what the hell was she doing? She, she, she had the best advantage out of everyone on the Navi army and she died. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, the Navi attacks with the animals. What are they called? The flying animals? The Ikran. The Ikran is a distraction to create chaos so that um, Trudy can Trudy, float in. Trudy can and float use, in. And use the take, guns. And use the guns on the cockpits. Yep. And so yep. she's like a lone gunman here. Mm-hmm. attacking from behind and then getting shot out of the sky. What a waste. What a waste. It's even worse the more I think about it. The more I think about it, the worse it gets. She could have won the entire war and like by herself. Right. She had like she had literally the biggest gun in the entire army. Right. And missiles. And missiles. So, and surprise. And surprise. And camo. Because and you can blame. And verticality. Yep. 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 Trudy, what are you doing? In fact, nobody's manning the door gun. She somehow has those automatic now. Before they were not, but they are now. Oh. Weird. The more I think about it, the worse it gets. Yep. Wow. Also, like, like, there's no one stationed on top of the colonel ship. Whereas for the bomber, there are people like sitting on top of guns. Mm-hmm. This is like the sweetest shot someone anyone could get. Like you just float right, right above it. It, ha- it doesn't know, even know you're there. You just line up your shot. Right. In fact, why isn't she taking out the engines? That's the vulnerable. Just hit, oh, just hit their engine. Yeah, yeah, what are you doing? Take out both. You could do a run on both of these engines right here. And there's no way for it to correct. Yep. Because it, it doesn't have the, tw- if you take out both of them, it's going to flip. Yep. So there's no way for it and, to and recover. The only way for it not to flip is for them to turn off the engines on the right side, which means they flat crash. They flat crash, yeah. True. F- Maybe it has some kind of safety mechanism where it can kind of like jutter lift, down, jutter down, and like crash land without killing everyone inside. But then it's disabled, so mission now it's disabled on the ground. You just shoot it there. Yeah, like it has guns, but they all point down. Right, and they, and they the Navi have ground forces, which are pretty useless, so they can attack the downed craft 
And they're going to dominate right. that because it's gonna, human gonna, versus Navi on physical just basis. overrun it. Yeah. Yep. It gets even worse. Trudy. Trudy. You, you f***ed up. She really Real bad. Up. Maybe they should have had a plan. Woo. That's right. He's like, did they inventory their resources? <laughs> they're just like, no, don't worry about no, it. No, no, don't worry about it at all. They had an milita- uh, important military asset and completely didn't use it. They sent Trudy out alone with, with no strategy or tactics in mind. And she just gets shot out of the sky. She's still not wearing a mask. Like, if she's going to get shot at, there's a possibility that she's going to get her shield, her windshield right. broken. Get, so get bef- your mask on. So before, it wasn't a combat situation. It's just a hostile environment. This is a combat situation. You need you need to be fully armored. Why does she just Maybe. have a tank top on? <laughs> That's enough protection. <laughs> I'm happy with that tank top. <laughs> she's also got the she's also got the jewelry on now. Maybe that's why she was assigned to be the transport person because she did not have like the combat skills. So they're like, you know what? You just shuttle the scientists around. I mean, that's okay because they have Jake, who's a Marine, who has mm-hmm. combat experience. So he can tell her what to do. Oh, I mean, but she was a pilot for, she shuttled the scientists around before that, before mm-hmm. Jake. And so before then it was all just transport the scientists around. Right. So maybe, maybe she doesn't have that hunter instinct, that killer, like, Oh, this is the weak spot of the ship. The yeah. propellers. <laughs> I'll, I'll shoot. It's a hovercraft ability. I mean, I I think I agree with that because she is a transport pilot. But Jake is a marine. That's he's right. He's the leader, and so he's going to be able to think tactically and say, "Hey, Trudy, like this is what Trudy, you should do. You're the key component in this. Shoot yeah. this ship. <laughs> right. And this is we're, you're the you're element of surprise. We'll do this, this, and the other thing. In fact, mm-hmm. put a helmet on and gas mask up." Because you're going to get shot at. We don't want you to lose. Also, like ships have pilots, and that's the thing I need you to kill. Shoot the pilot. That's right. It gets even worse. It gets worse the more you think about it. The more you think about it, the worse it is. She's like, I shoot the door hinges on the back of the ship. (laughs) Nope. (sighs) Okay. Okay, but they do end up winning the fight, so okay. Uh, and and everyone's healthy and okay except I guess uh, Dr. Augustine but she died before that mm-hmm. and so then at the end of the movie um, Jake says he's going to like join the Navi permanently um, but this was wild this was wild because like they have no experience converting a human into a Navi like permanent body like mm-hmm. and and at this point in time like yeah Jake doesn't have functioning legs but like his lungs and kidneys and everything mm-hmm. else is okay like this is risky. So these little wispy guys like transfer life. Mm-hmm. So you're saying there's no guarantee this consciousness transfer yeah, no guarantee. will work. It's He doesn't know how it works. And In Navi fact, they, don't know how it works. They tried it with, with um, Dr. Augustine and it didn't work. But they said like, well, she was too close to death. But it that may have been a coincidental issue. That's right. It also may have been that it just doesn't work. Right. They're assigning the fact that it didn't work to the fact that she was injured, but actually it could just be, it just doesn't work. Or right. you don't have the correct procedure down. And so he would just die into oblivion right. during the transfer. So he's like, he's like, f- he and Natiri and everyone are fully banking on like, oh, this is going to work. But like, what if he could have lived another 50 years, but in human body? Instead, he's like, you know what? I'm going to join, join the Navi permanently. And then he's just dead. Right. right. I mean, I think maybe in his mindset right now, worth the risk. But it doesn't seem like they're cognizant that it's a risk. Right. Because we don't know how it works. We don't know how it works. They don't know how it works either. I mean, are the Navi like transferring their consciousness around? But even if they were, but even if they were like, this is now a human into a, into a hybrid Navi something. That's human. right. It's, it, it's an alien biological body, the human, in a place that is alien, essentially. I mean, it's right. an alien. Right. So maybe everything that's co-evolved with the tree internet is able to interface with it. Yeah. But humans are not. And so we would need some sort of technology or understanding to get to that point. Yep. Hey, it worked. Therefore, they worked. were right. All right. It's fine. What if he wakes up here and he's just got terrible, like like the nightmares from the Navi body, the like the terrors that happened during the night, finally <laughs> igniting him, oh, and man. like his his eyes open, but then they like, narrow down, like evil shit. 
yeah, there's him. no, there's no, there's no guarantee that his brain would come out the same, and like he could be right. a different personality. That's true. Do you think he has a transfer boner? Oh, definitely, definitely got a transfer boner. Definitely morning wood from the the tree transfer. of voices. Yeah, that's right. Pretty it's permanently little, hard. It's, it's a little gift. Mokto. It's a little Constant gift that town. Yep. Pandora gives to him. The gift of forever hard. Mm-hmm. You're in the woods. Get hard, get hard if you're in the woods. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, because he's in the woods, he's going to pop wood. I see. He's like, I am your leader. <laughs> Bow before me. <laughs> There's one more tree in this, on this That's planet. Right. Don't now. grow a civilization about this is the home wood. <laughs> Yeah, so okay, that's, that's that, that was Avatar. <laughs> Super fun. Don't worry about the politics, uh, but there's lots of imagination to think about how will the corporation respond. I mean, I mean, they're not going to give up that unatamium for free. Yeah, how will the corporation respond? So they've kicked people, every the corporate people off the planet. The Navi have taken back over, but the corporation isn't going to sit on its laurels on Earth and do nothing. Right. They're going to come I mean, back and get the just, unobtainium. You come back with actual bombs, and then you didn't right. execute correctly. Right. Uh, how does Jake feel about killing so many humans? I mean, he did, he was That's on the right. right side. He was fighting for good, but he did have to kill a lot of fellow humans. He can't just not right. feel that. He definitely right? is a murderer. Yeah. yeah. Right. And what happened to that big red bird? Like, I mean, it mated for life with, or it yeah. bonded for life with Jake. And then Jake's like, yeah, go away. <laughs> go away. Go be free. But why? I thought it was... Thought like, yeah, what's the big good bird going to do now? Like, yeah. You can't, you can't, like, join with anybody else. That's right. So, yeah, that was weird. Hmm. He should keep his mount. You don't just give away your mount. Don't give it away. At least sell it. Yeah. He's like, I got fast travel now, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this the only mining facility on Pandora, or do they have multiple facilities? Uh, I mean, if I was a company trying to make as much money as I could, I would set up a couple of different ones. Right. I'd find the best spots, and I'd set up a couple of different ones, and especially if I don't care about the... The forest is land. I'm just going to bulldoze everything. I'll sure. Find the best places and just set up shop in multiple locations. I mean, on, in some, like it, it's probably cheaper to set up a base that's closer to the next location of ore. Why, why have a cars that drive around the entire planet? That's right. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. if they took, if they, Jake and the Navi took out this one location, then the corporation is like, well, I have nine other mining locations on the sure. planet. Let me just retake yeah. it. You guys can keep it. I don't care. Yeah, I just keep it. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. And will Jake and Natiri have like a mutant monster child? Because it's like a it's like a mixed of human something. Not be. I, we have no idea. I have yeah. no idea. I have not seen Avatar 2. I hope this is the plot. Uh, we'll see. Mm. Yeah, we'll find out in Avatar 2. Two. Two. See you guys next time. The Awakening. Is that what it's called? I don't know. That's what I would call it. The okay. awakening of this like mutant hybrid monster thing and they have to defeat it. Hmm. Well, you decided on the plot already. Roger that. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it's out now, but I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. We'll, we'll watch oh. it coming up.